Shalom. Welcome back to the Hebrew alphabet. Letters two by two. This is our third lesson. Again, you want to have this font chart available for reference. I suggest you print it off and the link will be below in the description box. Today we're discussing this letter, Shin. It's the next to the last letter and you'll find it under the value for 300. The distinguishing characteristic of it is the three flags. And as we said, the number value is 300. The picture meaning of the word is tooth. Now this letter is the final nun. We learned the regular noon in a previous lesson. This is the final nun, so you're going to find it under the bracket for the number 50, and it'll be the one on the left. So you see that it comes down below the line, and it's just a narrow figure. So together, these two letters spell shin, which means tooth, or also ivory, and you can understand how it could go from tooth to ivory, since ivory is made out of some animal tooth. So we find it here in Exodus 21:24, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. In 1 Kings 10:18, moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. I don't know why you would overlay ivory with gold, but that's what he did. In a related idea, we see that this word also means sharp, as your teeth are sharp. 1 Samuel 14:4. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one was Bozes, and the name of the other was Senne. Now this is the root, Shen, where the word two comes from. And it's kind of interesting because, after all, we do get two sets of teeth. Genesis 1.16 and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And in the same meaning of being second, Genesis 1.8, And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Also in terms of something happening a second time, it is sometimes translated as again. Second Samuel 16.19 And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son, as I have served in thy father's presence? So I will be in thy presence. This word sheni is also translated as scarlet, and I think it comes from the idea that your gums are red. If you are not familiar with the story of where the scarlet dye comes from, you can go over and look at that uh, in the video on the color scarlet in the description box below. Genesis 38, 28, And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand, and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. Exodus 25, 4, And many, many places, wherever it speaks about the building of the Mishkan, the building of the tabernacle, it uses this form. And blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. So we have this related root, shanon, which means to sharpen. In Psalm 64, 3, who whet, which means uh, to sharpen, their tongue like a sword, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Now here's an interesting use in Deuteronomy 6, 7, and thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children these words which I have, which I have put upon your heart this day. So the word teach them diligently is the same root as this to sharpen. So it gives us the thought that maybe chewing on God's word or how the word can sharpen you. The word is something which can cut, as we see here in Hebrews 4.12, where the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Speaking of chewing and eating the word, Yeshua said in John 6, 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Another related word, shnina, in the sense of being a sharp word, we see these translations. In Deuteronomy 28, 37, 
and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations whither Yahweh shall lead thee. In Jeremiah 24, 9, And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse, in all places whither I shall drive them. Now, as a verb, shana can mean to double, which we've already seen that it means to. It can also mean to change. And again, what happens to your teeth? They change. Genesis 41, 32. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. In 1 Samuel 21, 13, we see David. And he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. A good word from Proverbs twenty four twenty one, My son, fear the Yahweh and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. As a noun, shana means year, and you probably already know that, uh, from Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. And what happens as one year passes to another to change. Genesis 1.14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Leviticus 25.53, And as a yearly hired servant shall be with him, and the other shall not rule with rigor over him in thy sight. Now here's an interesting concept. The word yashen means to sleep. Genesis 2.21, and Yahweh God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. In terms of sleep being a different, it's a changed state of consciousness. Psalm 121, 4. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. And Daniel 12, 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Yashen is an adjective, also means old. Uh, if you were thinking that you know the word for old, that's zaken. Zaken is only used for people, and yashen is used for things. Leviticus 13.11 It is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. In Leviticus 26.10 And ye shall eat the old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. So something that's old is definitely changed. If you've gotten to any years in your life, then you know that things change. Things change in your body. Things change in how you think about things. It's interesting, also, in English, we have an idiom, which is to be long in the tooth, which also means to be old. Now, concerning gematria, when we have the word for year, shana, it adds up to 355. The average moon cycle is 29.53 days. If you don't know anything at all about the traditional Jewish calendar, then you can check it out here. Explaining This video explains that calendar. We run on a 12-month lunar cycle, but because we will be short some days, of the solar cycle, then about every third year we have a leap a month. That's the traditional Jewish counting. But you can see that the average moon cycle is 29.53. There have been ones that are up to maybe 29.8, and some that are less, maybe down to 29.3. But this is the average. If you multiply that out, you get basically 355 days. It adds up to a year. Concerning counterfeits, perhaps you lived through this. And just recall the proverb that we did earlier. In case you forgot, it was Proverbs 24, 21. So here is our memory verse, Malachi 3, 6. I'm going to read it, and then I'll read it slowly with a translation. In case you're just learning to read, you can follow. Ki ani Yehovah lo shaniti, va'atem b'nei Yaakov, lo chlitem. Ki, because, ani, I, Yehovah, I am Yehovah, lo shaniti, I do not change. Ve'atem, all y'all, b'nei Yaakov, the sons of Jacob, 
lo chlitem, you are not consumed. Ki ani Yehova lo shaniti, for I, Yehova, do not change. Good, so we've learned two more letters. We've got six out of 27 figures. There are 22 letters, but there are also five final forms. We've got six out of 27 under your belt, and next time we'll learn some more. In the meantime, tasimita inayim al hashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.